Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I've decided we're going to take a look at a different sort of puzzle. Now, this puzzle is called a compass puzzle, and I have to confess, it's a logic puzzle that I didn't know existed until about three weeks ago, um, where one of the viewers, Kyle actually, who I've mentioned before, um, showed me a puzzle that he considered to be the greatest puzzle he'd ever seen from the World Puzzle Championships. Now, that puzzle was a it was a compass puzzle, it was a bit bigger than this puzzle and it was indeed extremely difficult and interesting um, but rather than sort of jumping into one of the hardest and best puzzles ever seen at the World Puzzle Championship I thought we might take a look at a simple example first and then try a slightly harder example but sort of both of these hopefully are going to be manageable so how do compass puzzles work? Well these are fascinating things. Look at the size of this grid. It's five by five. So you might think, well, how can this possibly be a complicated puzzle? Well, the answer is that it, it is a complicated puzzle. And how does it work? Well, you can see that some of the squares in the puzzle have odd markings. Now, what do these markings mean? Well, what we need to achieve is we need to divide the whole grid into regions. Um, so regions are orthogonally connected areas such that each region contains exactly one of these marked squares. Okay, So we need to have basically four different regions in this particular puzzle. And then each region needs to obey a rule. Now the rule relates to these numbers we can see within the marked square. So let's look at this square for the starters. You can see it has a zero in the north quadrant if you like, 0 in the west quadrant, 0 in the south quadrant and 2 in the east quadrant. Now what this means is that the re this, this square's region must extend 2 to the east, 0 up, 0 west and 0 south. Okay, So this region is quite straightforward. Let's look at this region. Now this region it doesn't tell us anything about how many squares north doesn't tell us anything about how many squares west, but it says that the region for this square will need to have five cells to the south and three to the east. And I'm telling you, it's possible using just this information to find there is only one solution to this puzzle. And, you know, it's not terribly easy to find. And maybe some of you are looking at this saying, well, I can see the answer in my brain straight away. And that could be true. I think that there is a certain amount of intuition involved in, involved in solving these puzzles. Um, but I'm going to talk about how to do it very sort of uh, logically to start with. So this is, this is supposed to be a very simple example. Then we're going to move on to something a little bit harder. So let's get our head around how these work. And I would, I would start here. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to highlight each of these regions in a different colour. Because we know that they are all going to have to be different. So what shall I use for that? I'll use pink for that one. OK. So let's look at the green region. So we know that this region, it cannot extend anywhere down, anywhere west, anywhere up, and to east. So in fact... That is absolutely forced. There's no other squares now that can that can join this region. If I try and move it up, I'll break the north condition. Down the south condition. If I try and take it this way, I'll obviously break the west condition. And it can't have any more squares. It could, we couldn't have this square included because that would break the two. We only need two squares to the east. So where do we go from here? Now do take a stare at it, because this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. Now we might think, well let's start with this region, because this region obviously in two directions it's quite restricted. But if we think about how this blue region could extend, I mean the obvious way would be we could, we could put one down like that, and two east like that. We might say, well this is a, and this is a valid blue region, but the problem is, that this valid blue region isn't the only way that you can make this region correct. We could have this arrangement. Let's have a look at this blue region now. Does it meet the criteria? It has definitely has two squares to the right and it has one square down. So this is also a valid way of that this blue region could work. So perhaps, 
I wouldn't. I mean, this square we can say is forced. In both of those variations, this square was blue. So how would we think about the next part of this? Well, I think what we need to do is to look at the red region. And the way I solve these compass puzzles, or well, the way I've found is, is my way of solving it, is I try and hypothesize whether certain squares can be in certain regions. So we know this red region needs to come down five to the south and three to the east. So I would look at this square. Can this square join this region? Because we know that this square cannot join this region because that the only way of getting to this square would be to have at least well, it would, it, would, it would have gone north of the square and breached the condition. So this square here, that where, where the cursor is, is either in the red region or it's in the purple region. Now, to be in the red region, one, two, three, this would be the fourth square to the right of the red region. So that's, that, it doesn't seem like it could, it could be in the red region. And obviously if we come down, then the moment we start going this way, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to breach this three condition. So this square here, believe it or not, is part of the purple region. Now you can see now, if we need to attach this purple, this square to this square, the only it can't come across the top of the grid, so it's going to have to come downwards like this. And we know the red region, in turn, has to have five squares beneath it. Well, the only way we're going to get to any squares beneath it is by coming out this way. So the red region has to extend this way, like this. Right, so far we've got one, two, three, so I can have one more. And I, need, I still need another one, but you can see if I take it down to this square, then the purple region can't connect to its friends. So, in fact, I'm going to have to come this way. Now the 5 condition is met. The 3 condition here is not met. But this purple region, now to connect it to its friends, it's going to have to come this way. This blue region now still needs to have one cell beneath it, so that's going to have to be there. That completes this, and we're still left with a little bit of a, a thought, because we need 3 squares for the red region to the right of this marked square. Now we've got one, so we need exactly two more, which means that this purple region will also now be completed with one, two, three higher. So that is how to solve this simple example. And believe me, this is a very simple example of the compass form. But I have to say, the more I've done of these, the more fascinating I've found them. I think this is a beautiful logic problem. Um, and, you know, that you can create something complex in these tiny sizes of grids and something complex and unique, I think is really gorgeous. So now let's have a look at a harder puzzle. OK, so here's what I sus suspect is a more difficult example. Um, now, do try the puzzle yourselves. If you click on the link under the video, um, there should be links to both of the puzzles from today. And do let us know if you enjoy this variant because I'm very happy to do more videos talking about these compass puzzles. Um, now let's try and think. Now probably what I'll start with again is I'm going to um, highlight these in different colours. Let's start with that. That makes at least makes me feel like I'm doing something. So how could we start this puzzle? Um, so this blue square cannot go downwards. That's the first thing I'm seeing. I am using the zero here. Okay, so in fact, let's look at this particular square and ask ourselves which color gets to this square. So the green, one, two, three, four, Whichever way round it goes, it never gets to this square. It needs five at least to get to this square. We know this can't be blue. It could be purple because purple is unrestricted coming west and south. Now, and it can't be red because red 
can never get to this square without taking more than three in a westerly direction. So this is purple. Okay, now one thing we have to be careful about with these puzzles, believe it or not, is it's often very, I think the solvers design them to be counterintuitive. So your automatic reaction here is, ah, oh, well, the purple must join up like this. But firstly, we've got to check, can it come over the top here? Um, and the answer is no, because of the one in the north position. Obviously, if this comes round this way where the cursor's going and comes in here, there's going to be more than one northerly uh, cell associated with this region. So this has to attach down here like this. I'm not sure yet we can be sh certain about whether it goes this way or this way, though. Um, right, so what would we do next? Let's, let's look at this cell. What color is this cell? And is it possible that this cell is not blue? And I don't think it is possible, because if we think about how if this cell is not the cell that's east of our blue cell, how are we going to get a cell that's east of the blue cell that meets this northerly criteria? We can obviously come this way off the blue cell and we can pop upwards once, but we can never get this side again then. So this is blue. That's the next thing we can deduce. So now with using our purple, we can extend the purple once more. We're still not... And the blue Ah, now this cannot be blue, because if this was blue, then this number here would be 2, because there would be 2 cells to the east. So this is not blue, and it, yes, and it can't be blue because the only way we could get to this cell would be if there were 2 northerly cells. We could go here, but the moment we go here, we've, we've busted the north condition as well. So this cell, I don't know what Ah, this can't be purple either. This is either red or green, this cell. I'm gonna, I should have some sort of way of indicating that, but I'm just gonna indicate that with gray. So this is not blue and not purple. Um, oh, this cell is weird. How do we get to this cell? because we can't get to it with the purple, can we? Because this per this cell here, oh no, we can. Oh, that's horrible. Yes, we can. It could either be red or purple, because if this is just straight purple, like that, then it, we are meeting the the eastward condition, but then this would have to be a different color. Right, okay, so that, that's not as fruitful as I was hoping. So that but clearly this cell. Ah, okay, so this cell biz bizarrely enough is not purple. Because if it is purple, this cell cannot be purple. <laughs> so this cell is not purple. That is surprising. So this cell can't be purple, because I've got to connect this to something else. Um, right, OK. So how would we go from here? You're probably all seeing it much more quickly than I am. Um, I mean, it's just I find it amazing. There's hardly any information in this grid, and yet we can somehow find a unique solution, apparently. Or clever person could find a, a unique solution. That may not be me. Um, now, so actually, oh no, hang on, this purple is, I was about to say this had to be purple, I'm not sure that's true, because the purple could come this way and this could be purple. So either this square is purple or this square is purple. And you can see, hopefully, that this impacts a bit on this green square because the green square needs four cells south of it and 
Well, I think we've proved that this was purple. I should put that in. That is definitely purple. Um, but four cells south of it. So either this this can be made. We, this could be green. This could be green. This could be green. This could be green, and this could be green. That this cell could be green that way, or this cell must be red. It feels much more likely that it's red. Again, this is a sort of now. But if this is red, how do we get four squares lower than this green square? Well, one thing we could say is that if this is red, this purple now cannot come up here because it, there aren't going to be four squares left that could possibly be green that are lower than this square. So on the hypothesis this is red, this would be purple. Now let's just think about what that means for a moment. This square we know is red or green. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so if this if this is not if this is not green all of these squares would have to be green and then we know this cannot be blue so the blue would be broken so this would have to be green so this is green this square can be anything this square would have to be red and obviously one two two three this square would also have to be green so if that's green, the blue then is forced to be there. This is forced to be green. This is forced to be green. This is forced to be green because we must connect this up. I've got one, two, three. This would have to be green. And is this working out? One, this, this works. The purple is correct. The blue is correct. The green is not yet correct. I need to, ah, the green is going to break. <laughs> that is brilliant. The green breaks. Because look, the red now, we need to put three squares west of the red. Well, that's these three squares. And once we do that, the green cannot take another square in the grid. And therefore, we cannot increase it by one in this direction. None of these squares is valid. These are all going to be red. So that, believe it or not, is not correct. What a puzzle. That is monstrously hard. So, so coming back here... This square, believe it or not, is green. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. So this is green. Okay, so I think that means that this can't come over the top, can it? No, because of the one here. So this has to come low. And therefore, we cannot. this square cannot be green. Otherwise, we've got five greens lower. So this is green in order to connect it up. Now, how do we get three squares west of the red that are connected. You can see that the red can only come out over the top. So it's going to go like this and it's going to have to come here and then stop. Now we don't... Ah! Now look, look at the green now. The green needs... still. I still haven't managed to put in a square north of the green. The only square is this is this one. So this, in fact, is how the green square develops. That is extremely odd. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. So now, are we near, nearly there? Now the purple, we still haven't managed to put one north of the purple. That must be this square. What a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. That means this is blue. And finally, this cannot be purple. It cannot be red. This must be green. And that is the solution to the puzzle. Now, I really hope you enjoyed looking at this new type of logic problem with me. Um, if you did, do let us know in the comments. I'm more than happy to look at, um, well, perhaps I'll look at this puzzle from the World Puzzle Championship, which uh, is so highly recommended. Um, might be a long video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. And I'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.